Hello and Happy New Year! Welcome back to Bite Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. Maybe you have a New Year's resolution to learn how to use graphs or Neo4j. I decided to try something a little new this year, and what I'm trying is uh, just a little different way to format things. I am going to take us all the way back to basics. Basics for a data scientist, I'm going to assume are SQL. And I'm going to create a series of these things where we're going to just kind of build off of each other. We're going to start with a common SQL database, and um, then we're going to get it into a graph and talk about where and why that might be a good idea. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to find me on the internet. Just a reminder, here's the links to our series. The first one is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. The second is the previous videos in this series. And the last one is the repository for all of the code that we've done. You're going to want that repo today because it's going to show you how, how to populate your SQL database uh, for, for the data that we're going to be using hopefully for the next few weeks. Speaking of that data, it comes from this repository that's linked on the bottom here. And it's basically just a, a, a database looking at airports and the flights between them. So today, within that database, we're only going to be using two of the tables. We're going to use the airports table and the iRoutes table. And the, this is my cheesy ER diagram. The font in red indicates which, uh, where the common linkages are between them, which is the airport codes. All right, so let's get right into it. OK, here I have, I'm using Postgres. And I've already populated my database. You'll see how to populate those with the SQL queries that is in the SQL queries slash part 19 subfolder in the repository. OK, but like I said, we're going to use two of these uh, tables today. We're going to start with the airports one. So let's just take a quick look at what that airports table might look like. OK, so here's one airport. It's got the code ATL, which is Atlanta. OK, and you can see the description for our airport here. And you can see a bunch of other interesting facts around it. We'll eventually use those to populate a graph database, but not today. We're going to work all in SQL today. OK, I also mentioned that we're going to look at the routes between the airports. And in particular, we're going to use the iRoutes table because it's the one that uses the airports code, the airport codes. So I can see here, for instance, that I have a source column. And my source of my flight here is Atlanta. And I could fly to AUS. Um, that might be Austin, and it's got a distance. I believe these distances are in miles. Don't quote me on that. Um, you might think that maybe we're going to use that as a, a weight with our relationships down the road. You would be correct. OK, now let's do a query here. Let's say um, I want to fly away from my home. Um, I want to go on vacation, and I don't want to go more than two flights. So I want to two flights or less. And so what I am going to do, we call this, um, you know, we're going to do a two hop query here. Think about it like, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. And I'm just going to use a really super, super simple SQL query here. Those of you who've taken, you know, CS classes where you've had to do the six degrees of seven, Kevin Bacon um, within SQL, this, is, this can be done in a much more sophisticated fashion using recursive CTEs. But we're not going to do that today, just simple stuff. OK, so basically what I'm doing is I'm setting um, I'm setting my source as being Denver, that D-E-N, that's the closest airport to me. And then I'm going to select everything that might have um, be within two hops here. So basically, I'm saying of all of the airports that are within a target of Denver, um, we're going to uh, get um, every destination of those airports as well. So let's give that a run. OK, and you can see here I've got a list of airports that we could scroll through. That's all well and good. OK, now let's, uh, let's just count them. How many different places could I go to? So again, this is in the part 19 um, subdirectory of the SQL subdirectory. And the, the query file itself is called 2, deg two underscore degrees dot SQL. OK, so here I can see that I can reach a total of over 1,200 destinations within two hops of Denver. So that's exciting if I feel like going on vacation right now. Um, now, here's what I want you to think about. We're going to turn this into a little bit more of an interactive series as well. So I'm, I've got some, some questions I want you to think about. How could you achieve that same thing in Neo4j with Cypher? OK. Um, you know, we need to think about populating the database and whatnot, but this is going to be a thought exercise at first. Um, and then the extra credit, I showed you just two connections, but what if I just wanted to go any number of connections? Or what if I want to specify the number of connections? Rem think about what that recursive SQL is going to look like, that recursive CTE in SQL. Um, it's going to be not a lot of fun, I'll tell you right now. Um, but we're going to do this um, in Neo4j in an upcoming 
episode. And so again, just want to thank you for tuning in. Think about these problems, fire off what you think the answers are to me in Twitter, and I will see you next week. Talk to you later.